acoustic guitar as well as an electric guitar. Um, and those are going to be what I refer to as slurs, which are hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, um, bending, vibrato, those sorts of things. Um, so what we want to do is we want to look at using those in a realistic situation, okay? So let's just say I was playing something like this, okay? So you see, hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides and all those sorts of things really make for some fun embellishments that you can use on chords and certainly when you're playing scales and different things like that. So what I want to do is just explain to you a little bit about the technique, okay? Using the acoustic guitar, it forces you to have to be a bit more accurate than electric, possibly, and certainly use a bit more strength because the acoustic guitar is a little bit harder to play than electric because the strings are thicker, generally. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at using some hammer-ons and pull-offs over a D chord. Now again, you can use it over any chord, but just to show you how this works, I'm going to use the example of a D sus2 and a D sus4 using hammer-ons and pull-offs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my middle finger here and I'm going to do a hammer-on from 0 to 2. Now in order to do that, i got to make sure that my ring finger is not in the way and it's muting that string. Okay, and then I've got a pull-off I'm going to use for my pinky. Okay, now I'm going to combine this with a picking pattern so we can make a little exercise out of it and start learning how to do this, okay, using hammer-ons and pull-offs. So what I'm going to do is this. So I'm doing down, down, down. Now this, this uh, string right here, you can do it as a down strum or a down pick. Okay. I'm going to do it as an upstroke or an, what I call an up scoop, which pushes me back up towards the top of the guitar. Okay, it's an upstroke, but I was thinking of it like you know scooping ice cream or something like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is once we get done with that, we're going to go back to the uh, the second string and we're going to pluck that second string with a down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this one, the, the sus4, and I'm going to do an upstroke and do a pull-off. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the second string and do a down pick, and then do a hammer on again. With an upstroke. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and do a pull-off again. So I'm just kind of trapped in this little spot here. And then I'm going to go back to the second string and just pluck that. And that's the end of my pattern. So it sounds like this. which makes for a really nice melody, plus you're using an exercise out of it to develop your hammer-ons, your pull-offs, and the ability to make sure that you're staying out of the way, right? If you're turned this way, it becomes very difficult because that ring finger is probably touching that first string. You have to make sure that you're giving your hand enough room so when you do that, this finger is staying out of the way. See, now I could do the same thing in just a different idea. Let's say I was doing the C chord. Okay, a little bit different sound uh, because I'm creating something that's not a sus chord. I'm creating actually a, a major seven there by doing that. And then I'm also doing the, uh, the ninth there, or the second, a pull off there. 
So what I'm doing there is I'm doing the exact same concept, but I'm skipping over the third string on my way down. No, I'm playing the third string, sorry. And then what I'm gonna do is just get stuck there. So same pattern. Okay, so the point is you can do this over any chord. It doesn't make any difference. Um, but you're looking for embellishments that are using hammer-ons and pull-offs so you can kind of get comfortable with those. Now again, we're using it in a chordal form, not so much a scale form at this point, but we certainly can, can look at that in the future. Okay, so we've got... And then you can just start kind of having some fun with this as you're playing, thinking about down picking, thinking about up picking, or you using that up scoop to get you back to the top. You know, whatever it might be, but just start developing some organic movements using those. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start looking at uh, slides, okay? Now slides in this situation are a little bit harder to use, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a different chord here. I'm gonna take the A minor chord, and I'm gonna go into a different inversion of an A minor chord. What I'm gonna do is use the standard A minor, and then what I'm gonna do is move into this, which I'm playing zero, seven, five, zero, zero which is a voicing of A minor that I use quite frequently uh, when I'm soloing or when I'm playing a song that, you know, asks for an A minor. Oftentimes I'll go to this sound just because I really, really like the sound of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this A minor chord and I'm going to slide into this voicing. Okay, so right there what I'm doing is I'm playing down, 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 up. There's my little up stroke or up scoop. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide into this position and I'm going to play down, 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 up on the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd and 1st strings. So it makes a nice little segue from one voicing to another. See? So I'm using down, 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 up, down, 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 up, using the slide right there on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Okay, and then once I'm there, I can do all kinds of different things, but that's a great way of just practicing utilizing a slide in a realistic but yet creative way. Okay, now vibrato and bending are the other two elements that Again, we'll talk about more uh, in the future, but right now, in this case, vibrato is when you simply shake a string or a set of strings. Okay, now vibrato on acoustic is a little bit different than a vibrato on an electric guitar. Again, simply because you're a bit more restrained because of the thickness of the strings. Okay. So in a chordal sense right now, we're going to be using the vibrato to simply shake those strings a little bit to add an effect to the things that we're playing. Okay, if I was playing single notes, again, I'm just lightly twisting that towards the floor. Okay, I'm not going for a really wide vibrato at this point. I'm just looking for a nice little pull. So at the back of my hand, I'm grabbing on like this, and I'm twisting like I'm opening a doorknob. Okay? Okay, sounds really nice over a chord. Bending is a little bit different. Bending is pushing that string up in the air, which again, an acoustic's a little bit harder to do, well, quite a bit harder to do than an electric guitar. but you can still use it to the best of your ability. You can certainly get some cool bluesy kinds of bends. And if you really like doing a lot of bends, you may have to look at getting a little bit lighter set of strings or something like that on your acoustic guitar to be able to do those, unless you've got really, really super strong hands, which is awesome. 
But that's what bending is, is I'm pushing it towards the ceiling. And again, I'm twisting this way. Just giving it a little bit of a push to get that kind of sound, okay? So if I was doing this, maybe I'll add that little tag at the end. So I'm gonna do a little bend on this seven, go back to the seven, play the five, and then the seven here. Now I've got a little, you know, chordal lick with a, a little blues lick at the end, or pentatonic lick. Okay, so a great way to start utilizing slur elements, vocal elements, things that are not so staccato as picking everything, and I'm not saying that that's bad, I'm just saying these are other techniques that you can certainly start exploring in your playing.